Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have done some tweaking of this rock, and we did a little tweaking on our white water for the little waterfall. We did a, added a little bit more interest to our rocks. And now we're going to do this long-awaited tree. And the interesting thing about the long-awaited tree is we're going to use the same basic recipe that we use for our rocks. Now, as I look at the value of the color, value being the range of lightness and darkness of a color, the value of this tree is pretty, you know, it's not really all that foreign from the value of many of these colors that we have in the environment. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to have to be s sensitive to lights and darks. And there's a, one of the devices that we use to create visual interest is putting a light against the dark and a dark against the light. So we're going to try to keep that concept in mind when we start with our basic colors of this tree which is going to be white burnt sienna and blue so i'm going to start with this basic color of white burnt sienna and blue and don't try to match perfectly the colors that are on the 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 photo that you're working from look at your your painting and try to get something that fits with this new creative or created environment of this painting. Now, I'm going to have that tree come boom, kind of like this. So I'm going to get this arc in here. I want to do that, that arc. And instead of a, a perfect, you know, somewhat straight tree, I'm going to try to create a little greater visual interest. And I'm going to go with a a little bit more blue and a touch of turquoise now on this tree and I'm going to use somewhat of a hammer stroke and I'm going to try to get to the thickness that I want so I'm getting a ballpark color I'm getting a ballpark color and I'm, I'm working at getting a ballpark thickness Maybe just a little bit more. A little bit thicker down here. To create visual interest, one of the devices that we often resort to is put a dark against a light. and a light against the dark. So now, to help create visual interest, I'm going to go a little lighter. Now, orange and blue are complementary colors. So I put a little touch of orange here. So, And since I'm quite dark down here, I'm going to try to go a little bit lighter here, but I need to cool it down slightly. So I put a little turquoise with it. All right. Now, I'm using somewhat of a hammer stroke here. No. Now it's time to go to, to a significantly darker color. And I'm going to put a little touch of the, uh, the cool red and a little touch of the, the um, turquoise with it to give a little bit of color so it's not just a black. The light source is coming from a little bit to the right of 12 o'clock, a little towards 1 o'clock in this valley. And as I develop this tree, I'm going to also try to do a little bit better job of developing, for the viewer's information, where the light source is. So I'm going to be going 
to I'm going to be adding some some light in this area to give that information to the viewer that the light is coming from just slightly to the right of 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, somewhere in there. And thereby, you know, as I, as I work on that, isolating that light source a little bit more, we should see an increase in visual interest. Now, I'm going with a little bit stronger uh, a dark with burnt sienna here, trying to get a little bit, suggest a little more earthiness in this tree trunk. Maybe uh, trying to suggest a little bit more clearly the rough bark or the rough nature here. And now I might go to this lighter color. Let's get a little touch of sunlight coming through here against this dark. Now, one of the marvelous things about oil paint is you can do something like this. And this is something a photographer finds quite difficult. I can come with a a nice light color, a, a fairly a little bit lighter color and a cool color on the back side of this tree right here to help suggest a reflection coming up and illuminating the back side of this tree. I'm going to go a little bit lighter here. I'm going to let a little touch of light hit. and let it hit right here. Lighten that up just a little bit there. I think now one of the things I see here is I've gotten a little thick up here, so I'm going to clean out my brush and take some of the thickness out of the top of this tree. All I do is wash my brush and my mineral spirits. The painting is dry, so I can take a little bit of that thickness out right here if I wish. And now go a little bit, not quite so light. Right there. And we'll go with some of that kind of a light but cool reflected light in the background here. A little bit darker again. Touch a cool red. And I'm going to go back again with that kind of a reflected light 
bouncing off the water, somehow illuminating the backside of this tree. Which gives it a certain amount of radiance. Okay? Now, having put that tree there, I'm going to need to put a little lighter light on some of these rocks here. So I'm going to put a slightly lighter stroke of, of light on that rock as if to suggest that we got a little bit more light there. Okay, now to help this look a little bit more natural, I'm going to put a touch of um, green. There's there's got to be some kind of green f growing back in you know amongst these rocks. So I'm going to put a little bit of greenness in here. It could be just some kind of weed, and we're going to have to suggest just a little touch of foliage that's associated with this tree. So in the photograph, there's really no foliage associated with this tree. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a, a little bit of a branch here, soften the edges, and let there be a little bit of foliage associated with this tree. And when we put that foliage in there like that, we can go darker in the shadow underneath it. So I'm going to take and put a little darker shadow underneath that cluster of leaves. Since we have some moss growing on the rocks, we ought to have a little bit of moss growing on the trunk of this tree. So I'm going to take a little bit of that mossy, cool earth color, and we're going to break this tree up a little bit with some moss. And that will help fit it into the environment just a little bit more. Okay? Now... As I look at this, I'm going to put just a little suggestion of a bush that is right in here. That is coming out of the same piece of ground that that tree is. And we'll put just a little bit of information that a touch of light has gotten through to illuminate it. putting a little darker 
track here. Now, with that being said and done, let's put a little stroke of brighter light in a couple of places back here. And we'll try to get a little better suggestion of where the light is coming from. Okay, now there are other things that we could do to this painting. And there's that, that hunting and pecking part. The greatest limiting factor we have in doing a painting is being able to see what we're looking at. We have been looking at this photograph and out of the workshop of eight people, and then counting mine, we have nine different interpretations <laughs> of this picture because we have nine different levels of the ability to see what we're looking at. To improve our ability to see something, drawing is really essential. So for those of you that are watching this video, I'd really like to encourage you, take time to get some, it doesn't have to be expensive paper, it can be the brown wrapping paper that you get at one of the home improvement stores. Get some Conte crayon or charcoal or, or chalk, whatever. Take time to draw because any amount of time you spend learning how to draw is going to have a direct effect on your ability to paint. You never outgrow your need for drawing. If you're drawing a figure, a dr the ability to draw a figure has a direct impact on how well you can draw a rock because so many of the contours are the same or a portrait or drawing animals. So I really encourage you to, to uh, take time to draw. Now there, there is more that can be done to this painting and this time next year I will look at this painting and say ah look and then I will improve it a year from now because our ability to see and to paint improves as long as we're painting and drawing. So I hope that you've gotten a lot out of this video and I would like to encourage you to go to our website, Hoglum, H-O-U-G-L-U-M, hoglumfineart.com and look at some of the work that's there, some of the videos that are available, educational videos. And some of you are probably wondering why I have this glove on. Well, 
On the 15th of May, I had surgery on my hand. And now three months later, I'm still having problems or complications from that surgery. So uh, still going through physical therapy and all that. I'm not trying to, to begin a Michael Jackson trend here. <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is a glove that uh, is part of my therapy and recovery from the surgery. So anyhow, that answers that question. If you have any questions, you can get, uh, and have any serious questions, you might want to email us. Our email is associated with, at our website. You can email us through that. And with that being said, keep your paintbrushes wet, keep painting, and keep drawing. And good luck to you.